Hello and welcome to the fourth video of the FP2 chapter Further Argand Diagrams. Start a question on the screen to review a GCSE topic about inequalities. We can use inequalities to define the given region. In order to do this we need to know what the lines are. At the top here this is y equals 4, at the bottom y equals 1, and in red this curve is y equals x squared. We use these to define the region by choosing the appropriate inequalities. We can see that this region here is greater than 1 and less than 4 for y. We can also see that y must be greater than x squared to be in here, so we also have y is greater than x squared. And of course you can test that these are correct by choosing any point in the region and making sure that it fits both of these. But there is one final thing to consider, and that is what the lines are. Here we've got a dashed line or a broken line, and here as well, these represent strict inequalities as I've written them here. However, the solid line at the top, if you remember, represents the fact that it can equal that as well. So that needs to be less than or equal to 4. So these are our finished inequalities representing this region here. We're going to use these ideas in this video, combining them with the complex numbers that we looked at in the previous few to represent regions on an Argand diagram. Now this covers two sections in the textbook because it's using all of the loci that we've already looked at. These should be quite familiar to you. So as we know, z minus z1 within a modulus, that's the distance of z from z1, is equal to a constant a, describes a circle with center z1, and radius a, like this. Knowing that, if we replace the equals with a less than symbol, then that's saying the distance from z to z1 is less than a, so that's anything within the circle. And of course, if we were to do greater than a, that describes anything outside the circle. And as mentioned on the starter, if you want to include the circle as part of the region, then you just put a little equal sign on one of these. In that case, you should be drawing the circle with a solid line, not a dashed line. So for example, shade the region that satisfies this inequality here. And immediately notice there is an equal sign here, so I should be drawing a solid line. So I need my Argand diagram. I'm going to need the point 4 plus 2i as z1. So we've got 4 over here, like this. The centre point goes here, and we can see that the radius is 2, so that comes down to the real axis, and it comes halfway to the imaginary axis here. So it looks something like this. And then my region needs to be less than two units away, so it's everything within the circle, including the circle itself, as already mentioned. Another convention, rather than shading it, is to just put an R for region in the correct place. The next one is similar, but it is slightly different. We're looking at the argument of z minus z1 is equal to alpha, and that's the half line from z1 at an angle of alpha to the real axis. What then would this describe? Pause the video now if you want to puzzle this out for yourself. This is saying that the argument, the angle of this half line, is greater than alpha, but less than beta. That's giving us two half lines. If we ignore this bit here, we've got a half line here that's acting as a boundary line. It must be greater than that. And then if we ignore this part here, we've got a half line here that is acting as another boundary line, and that has to be less than this boundary line. So the region is between two boundary lines, both using z1 as a fixed point and having angles alpha and beta with the real axis like this. So this part is saying that the argument is greater than alpha. Here's that line there. This part is saying that the argument is less than beta. That's this line here. And if it has to be greater than this angle, less than this angle, then it must be everything in the region between them. And again, if you wanted to include either of these lines, 
you would have to put a little equals line and change it to a solid line rather than a dashed line. Quick example, shade the region that satisfies this. So this is giving us our point, 2 plus 2i. Open circle. And then our two boundary lines here, we can see it must be greater than 0, which of course is just parallel to the real axis. And it must be a solid line because of the equals here. So that is here. Pi by 4, that's 45 degrees, so it's coming off at a perfect diagonal, and again, a solid line. The region they want, then, is this region here. Either shaded, or put an R, or possibly both. Of course, to finish that off, I should just label my axes. There we go. The third and final region we're going to look at is connected with the perpendicular bisector of Z1, Z2. Here we've got this situation. If we replace this equals with an inequality, this is saying that the distance from Z to Z1 is less than the distance from Z to Z2. So from Z to Z1 has to be a closer distance. So it's all the points that are closer to Z1 than Z2. And that describes the region on one side of the line. In this case, this side. And of course, this is not a half line, so if we needed it to, that would continue down there. In the same way, if that was a greater than sign, of course, it just describes the other side of the line over here. And as I've said with the others, if either of these had an equal sign on them, you would turn this into a solid line rather than a dashed line. Quick example of this one. Shade the region that satisfies this inequality. Okay, we're going to need our axes. And then we're looking at the point 4 and 6, both on the real axis. And if this was an equal sign, it would be the perpendicular bisector of the line segment 4 to 6. And that's really easy. I can do that. It's parallel to the imaginary axis, and it goes halfway, so it goes through 5. So I can draw this quite easily. It's a strict inequality, so it's a dashed line. And I want the points that are closer to 4, so it's the left-hand side of this. So it's all of this region over here. There are two further quick notes. The first is that you might have to do multiple inequalities overlapping to give a region of intersection. If this is the case, sketch each one individually, just see where they overlap, and then label that region. For example, we're going to take the three that we've already done. We did this one, which was a circle. Inside the circle looked like this. We had this one just on the previous screen, a vertical line through five, the left-hand side of that, and it was a dashed line rather than a solid line. And we also had this one, which looked like this. Putting all three together where all three are true is this region here. So you could shade that in a more obvious color like this, or you could put on an R to show that this is the region. And if you really wanted to make it clear, you could go over that again, just to outline it. So a couple more examples of this. Shade the region given by both this locus and this locus. So here we've got a circle, center, minus 3, 4, with a radius of 5. So I'll plot that first. Minus 3, 4, and if it has a radius of 5, it will cut both axes. This one, it will come down to a minus 1, and over here, as it comes round, it should come out to 2. Putting those on just helps the examiner to see that I understand the radius is 5. Now the argument of z, realizing that this is effectively z minus 0, so our z1 here is 0, 0. So it's coming out of here. Let me put this in a different color. Open circle here. And the angles are 2 pi by 3 and pi. Pi is the negative real axis. So I can put that on, and all of these are solid lines. 
2 pi by 3 is about here. It doesn't need to be particularly accurate on my diagram because, of course, I can just put the angle on here. And I know with this one it's between these two lines, and with the circle it must be less than 5 units away, so it's inside the circle between these two lines. So the region that I want is this part here. In part B, we've got a little bit more work ahead of us, because this is a circle, but I don't know where it is or how big it is. I need to do the algebra. So we've got 2x minus 4, the real part, plus yi, the imaginary part, less than or equal to x plus yi. Getting rid of the modular symbols means I need to square this and each of these. Expanding these brackets out, we get 4x squared minus 32x plus 64 plus 4y squared. It's less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. And that gives us 3x squared minus 32x plus 3y squared plus 64 less than or equal to 0. Not the nicest numbers in the world. If we divide everything by 3, it gives us some fractions. We get x minus 32 over 3, and then divided by 2 gives us 16 over 3 squared, minus 16 squared over 9, plus y squared, plus 64 over 3, less than or equal to 0. And those numbers combine to give 64 over 9. So we have a centre point at 16, 3, 0, and a radius of 8 over 3. Now we can plot that on the Argand diagram. 16 over 3, that's 5 and a third. Let's put that about here. That's the centre, because the y-coordinate is 0. And the radius is 8 over 3, which puts the other intersections at 8 and 8 over 3, or 2 and 2 thirds. like this. And of course we want less than or equal to, so it's the region inside the circle. The only thing left to consider then is the second locus from 4 to 6, the real part of z must be between these two lines. So if we put 4 on, that's about here, and 6 is somewhere maybe here. The real part of our complex number must be between these two, so that is telling us it must be within the two vertical lines here and here. If it must also be inside the circle, this is our completed locus, and the region is here. One final note is just to emphasize when you're using inequalities, remember that a dashed or broken line represents a strict inequality. It's so very easy to forget this. And I'll finish with a few examples going the other way where we've been given the diagram and we have to write out the inequalities. Starting with the orange one, here we've got an open circle and two half lines coming off. So straight away we can say it should be something like this. I know z1 minus 3 plus i. I know that this one should be a strict inequality, so that's fine here. But this one should not, because this is a solid line. So there should be an equal symbol here as well. Now I put in my numbers, alpha is obviously a 0, and if we look at the scale, 1 to 1 gives this angle pi by 4. So we've got 0 less than the argument of z minus minus 3 plus i, so that's plus 3 minus i, it's less than or equal to pi by 4. So be careful with your inequality symbols, but also be careful with your negatives in here when you put that point in. Second example is quite similar, another open circle, two half lines, so it's the same sort of locus. But here z1 is root 3 plus i, and the angles are a little bit more interesting. This one, quite easy, compared with the real axis, this is a right angle, pi by 2, so I can start writing out my locus. We've 
put pi by 2 less than or equal to the argument of z minus root 3 plus i less than or equal to and then this angle is a bit strange because usually if it comes down compared with the real axis we would measure clockwise and give this as a negative angle but if we did that we would end up with a negative angle greater than something that's greater than a positive angle and the inequality would not make sense even though in the context you could understand why this is negative and why this is positive but don't put that in an inequality if the negative is going to somehow end up being bigger than the positive in this case we should step outside of our principal argument range and instead of measuring clockwise we should measure all the way around greater than pi to give this as a positive angle that's fine we still need to work out what it is though so very quickly using alternate angles that is the same as this let me call it theta and that will be inverse tan of 1 over root 3 which equals pi by 6 so usually I would measure this angle here and give that as minus 5 pi by 6 but in this case just because it's going to go into this inequality I'm going to measure it round this way and give it as 7 pi by 6 so that that is a number bigger than the small angle pi by 2 over here so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this make sure that your bigger angle is actually bigger than your smaller angle even if it means going outside the principal argument range next example is the same point but the opposite side shaded so we've got the same angles the same lines same setup and now i should use the negative because this is going to be my smaller one and it's going to go round to pi by two so in this case i will use minus 5 pi by 6 and it's a solid line argument of z minus root 3 minus i less than or equal to pi by 2. final example is a little bit different we've got a circle center 3 minus 2 radius we can see from the scale is 2 so i can write that locus as z minus 3 plus 2i must be less than or equal to 2 because it's a solid line so I've got the equals there as well and we're obviously inside the circle so it's less than now I do also have these half lines and if you look carefully you can see this is an open circle on 5 minus 2 so my second locus goes from an angle again a solid line argument of z minus 5 minus 2i another solid line and another angle the bigger angle is quite easy that's pi and again because we can see the scale one to one this is a pi by four angle which means this is three pi by four so my smaller angle is three pi by four argument z minus five plus two i less than or equal to pi but now we need to show that it's both of these together to do that we can use set notation so we've got z is an element of the complex number set where the following locus holds true z minus 3 plus 2i is less than or equal to 2 intersects with the second one where z is still a member of the complex number set where it holds for this locus And in green is our final answer showing that it's the intersection of this locus and this locus therefore it must be this region here and that should be enough because we covered two sections of the textbook in there for you to practice questions from exercise 4c and 4d maybe i'll see you for the final video in this chapter